Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here, bring about conversations of a psychological, mental health, emotional health paradigm. We do that as often as we can, usually several times per week. We do that for your listening pleasure, although the last couple of months have been a little off. Anyway, regardless, we're looking at uh, flirting versus kindness signs, and so... Uh, that's kind of what's there today. Flirting can be one of those tricky things because if someone's flirting and we're not getting the message, they can get really frustrated. But if we're trying to flirt and they're not uh, receptive, that can be embarrassing. So knowing those differences in signs is important. Obviously, if someone's flirting, they're going to treat you differently than they treat other people. So watching how uh, things are between them and other people is in, an important factor. If everyone is treated similarly or almost the same, then really what happens is we want there to be flirting. And so our mind will tell us there is when in reality it's just a, a, a construct of how kind they are to other people. Um, the balance of initiation of the desire to get to know each other more, hang out, be around each other, and all of that also ends up out of balance. Now, that out of balance nature can be something as simple as but not limited to your desire to spend more time with them versus their kind of looking at it as, yeah, that's a cool opportunity but not a necessity. So if you're the one initiating the contact via cell phone, via, um, you know, online interaction, email, telephone call, whatever, invitations to hang out in person, whatever have you, then chances are you're overly invested and they're under invested. And for a relationship to be mutually beneficial, there has to be at least to some degree, a mutual interest in the continuation and uh, modification and, um, you know, focal point of the relationship. And that can be really hard, especially we see what we want to believe, not, what it, not what's always there. And so that can be challenging in and of itself. The next thing to look at is the nature of how people relate to each other and, you know, are you in a position where you're always the one coming up with things to talk about? Spontaneous conversation is another tremendous way for people to gauge levels of interest. If you are leading the conversation, always the one trying to get them to be engaged with you in conversing, then that is problematic because things not being reciprocal are the indication that they see the relationship differently than you do. Um, if they're willing to talk about other partners or the potential of other partners with you, there's another telltale sign. Obviously, if they're interested in you and only you, then they're not going to do this. Also, and unless they speak about being in a polyamorous or multi-person relationship, if they're talking with other people about you, that means they don't see you in the way that you would prefer to be seen. So a lot of it is the willingness to see things as they are, but not worse than they are. Sometimes it takes a person uh, a good bit of time to identify whether they're interested in the relationship, especially if that individual is still grieving the relationship they've recently lost or they are you know, struggling to identify if they're ready to move on with someone. Um, another thing there is they don't do a lot of spending time with you by yourself, and um, that can be problematic, obviously, if you're going to build a more personal relationship. The one-on-one -on -one time is required or compulsory to being able to do that, and if that desire isn't there, if that opportunity never arises, then the relationship is going to stall out naturally anyway. So identifying the amount of time that a person is willing to put into getting to know you personally better in a one-to-one -one scenario is another great indicator of level of interest, level of focus, and overall level of just idea of what is trying to be accomplished. So hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you Keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Realize there are 8 billion people in the world. There's someone out there for everyone if we run across them. Some of that is a little bit of happenstance, but continue looking and realize that someone, uh, someone owning themselves as they are is the prerequisite to a healthy bond. And so 
I encourage you, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.